G'day ladders and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to be talking about progression as an artist. From the budding stages of learning that you like this sort of stuff, to becoming someone who is good at what they do and can make money from what they do and has an audience. Um, my prime example is going to be the only thing I really have to talk about, which is my progression and, and where I started off. So I'm going to be using uh, examples of, of my approach, but also uh, things that I learned in reading art books and, and looking at people who inspired me. So three things I will say at the front of all of these pictures I'm going to talk about. First of all, steal. It is not a bad thing to steal things, especially when you're learning. Uh, we learn through observation and while uh, I, I used to be a guilty pleasure for me when I was starting off, you know, I used to kind of trace things now and then or copy things, but let's be honest, this is how we learn things about, you know, proportions, about shape, about how other people interpret cloth and skin and expression. And by stealing that, we learn and then over time adapt it to our own style and it becomes our own because all these things are mixed together. Second of all, enjoy the journey. Uh, I've had messages from people who have asked me, how do I get popular on the internet? How do I get millions of views on, on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And that's like this really immature sort of goal. It's like, I want to be in a place where I have a million views. Um, but it's not about that. This whole process of progressing as an artist is about learning what you love and getting better at it and having goals and reaching those goals. And so the last thing I want to mention is essentially making it an adventure. That's how you turn the journey into the ride is having a project that you're going to work on, have several projects you're going to work on and get inspired and, and see things and do things that make it a fun thing rather than it being a struggle to get to a million views because you're just going to get frustrated until you get there, which is a place you might never get. But if you make it a journey, you're going to love. It's going to be awesome. Anyways, I'm going to go through my uh, progress, my journey as far back as I, I have record of. Um, I used to draw quite frequently when I was younger, but in year seven, when I was age 12, so I just began high school, uh, this is when it became a thing. Uh, I wasn't the coolest kid in school, I'll be honest. And to be fair, it wasn't like purely because kids are jerks. I was a bit weird. You know, I didn't bathe that much. So I think I smelt a bit and I was very annoying. I'm a very energetic kind of person and, and it's not cool to be very energetic. Um, and so to counteract that, because I didn't have too many friends, I drew in the canteen area at lunchtime and at recess. And so these are the kind of drawings that uh, I used to do when I was budding as an artist. And I used to, I, I developed my uh, signature for my drawings when I was in year seven. I used to practice that as well. Um, but I used to give myself little exercises, uh, like creating new characters and drawing them on different angles. Um, as you can see, I was heavily inspired by things at the time. I used to be massively into Dragon Ball Z. And uh, when I say copying is like, you know, be a, don't be afraid to steal. This was very much part of my early development uh, in this age group. Uh, like th this character here was inspired by Frieza from Dragon Ball Z, but you know, you, you kind of pretend that you made up the character. You know, this character in particular was, uh, it's a pose I think was from a Deadpool comic, which I never read Deadpool, but my brother, my older brother, who who is also quite artistic, um, drew a, a pose like that. And I ended up copying it, but just pretending, you know, I made it up. You know, this character is obviously very inspired by uh, Warhammer, which I was sort of into at the time. Um, and again, you just kind of pretend that it's yours. So like the stealing process is like seeing something that you love and, and trying to, you know, recreate that, but the m making it different and making it your own and uh, challenging yourself in new ways. And so even though I was like quite young, uh, I wanted to make sure I wanted the feeling that with every new drawing I did, I was trying something new and like with this one in particular it was something about lighting and, and a pose and, and that's an attitude that is a good thing to have. Things, exercises like trying to, when you make up a character, trying to draw them on all different angles and, and, and it became a game to me personally and I think that was a, a very good part of, you know, developing um, uh, the character animation side of myself that came later on is having these exercises that, like this character here, this is character turnaround where, um, yeah, I just wanted to challenge myself and see what he would look like on all different angles. The next year in high school, uh, I started to get 
a bit more obsessive with it. And uh, thankfully, I wasn't as isolated socially because, I, you know, for being the weird kid, but I was now the drawing kid. So uh, everything I did was revolved around this whole drawing aspect of myself. And I wanted to push that and I wanted to, to make that, you know, like bigger. And so I had plans of, of uh, things like um, ma making uh, a book. I wanted to make a drawing book. You can see some of the pages here. Um, where, you know, and, and which is interesting because I mean, look, this is like 10 years later and this is what I'm doing tutorials. I'm, it's always been part of me that I wanted to share the process, you know, and so even at age 13, I was trying to create a drawing book. So that's interesting. Things don't really change, do they? Uh, I wanted to make comics. I want to be a comic book artist. I wanted to make comic strips for the local newspaper. And I had all these plans for making all these strips and sending them into a newspaper. And, and you know, I never actually did it but I always did these things I used to buy flip books off of uh, a friend and start making little animation -y things I also started to mess around a lot more with color and uh, trying different techniques for coloring in things I learned a new trick about how to create a glowing look like you see on that character in the top right the next year is when things became quite digital at the age of 14 in year 9 uh, I learned of programs like flash and um, and Photoshop, and it started with uh, with Microsoft PowerPoint. Actually, I made my first stick figure animation in that. And then uh, my assignment in high school was to make a, a short animation. And people did like five or six frames of like a stick figure punching another. And I obsessively did it. I think I failed the assignment because I handed it in too late. Um, but yeah, that that turned from that into Flash, and then I got very much into digital art. And uh, as you can see here, I started trying my hand in Photoshop painting. And it was really quite simplistic at first. It was pretty much just selecting areas and adding gradients. But that was that was like this new tool, this amazing new fun thing that I had. Um, and then the next uh, three years together, because I moved school to another school, and the last three years of my high school is when I, it became uh, a transition from it being this hobby and this personality that I had into something that I felt could be a profession. Because I started doing animations, I won some competitions, some animation competitions, and um, I, uh, um, aside from trying new things and doing new things, I started to develop uh, an identity on the internet and a name Jazza which was like my year 7 uh, email name and that's stuck ever since um, and it's just kind of kept going and um, kept working on the Photoshop stuff and everything was like this new exciting goal every character was the next big character you know like every I, I'm insanely optimistic in the way that every time I create a series like here you can see this character from the Paladin series this is when I originally redesigned him when I was in year 12 um, every time I, I create these things it, it's in my mind gonna be a hit you know but that's that's okay because that that's what makes me excited to work on it and it doesn't matter where when I'm finished whether it's a hit or not because I move on to my next exciting thing then finally I graduated high school and I thought, you know what, I just want to keep doing this and I was just having fun and I started to learn about sponsorship and, and how to get a little bit of money doing what I loved and so uh, and Newgrounds and the reason why I push Newgrounds so much and keep putting Newgrounds out there is because Newgrounds was the channel from me creating the transition from uh, someone interested in art to someone who could uh, have an audience. So creating that transition and then someone who had an audience to someone who could make money out of having that audience by gaining sponsorship. And so I totally attribute that to Newgrounds and that is why I invite everyone who's got that creative bone in their body, whether it be through art, music, games, animation, to go there and, and experience that sort of environment. Anyways, after I graduated high school, I just kind of stayed at home. I lived with my mother at the time and just kept doing what I was doing. and. Uh, I, yeah, pretty much lived in my bedroom and made stuff and like entered little competitions but mostly I just wanted to work on my own little animated series and stuff which you can see by going to my Jazza Studios YouTube channel uh, and yeah it's just I pretty much feel the same as I did when I started all this um, as I, I wrote here I feel like creatively exactly the same as I did when I was 12 I feel the same when I create a picture in, in Photoshop now as I did when I was drawing in the canteen area when I started. And uh, and these are just a couple of the pictures that I've done 
you know, over the last few videos on, on this channel, um, that to me feel the same as when I made up my funny, dumb little characters, you know, um, when I was a kid. And uh, I think the reason I wanted to make this video is because I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about, um, you know, how to, how to get there. And a lot of people can be quite impatient uh, about this progression. But uh, it really is a time thing, and it's more about your passion. It's more about being excited about it. And I have so far to go to be anywhere near these people that I've grown up admiring. But like, it's an honor that uh, I have over 10,000 subscribers on my channel of people who are interested in in hearing what I have to say and sharing their ideas and, and thoughts and techniques with me. So thank you for joining me. Uh, this is a little bit of an ode video to you by sharing a bit more of my past and showing you some of my more naked drawings. When I say naked, like vulnerable, I was I was young and, and not so impressive. But I think seeing someone's history is, is pretty cool. So anyways, thank you for joining me and uh, make sure to click the link in the description if you want to get the PDF of those pictures that I've shown in the slideshow. And uh, have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation, or game you make on newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.